Hi, I'm Liz Jones, and today I'm going to be presenting my creative writing portfolio for this semester in Professor Tesco's creative writing class. Um, so we focused on four pieces this semester that really varied in uh, genre and variety for me especially. Uh, the first being a drama, which was a conflict between two characters that you couldn't outright state, and mine was called Sick of It, which was an argument between a couple where the, the woman in the relationship is having health issues and she refused to them and so it's basically a drama talking about um, the issues that they had from that and her non-acknowledgement of her sickness. My second piece was a creative nonfiction, which was really fun for me to write. It's called The Brown Egg Story, which is kind of hard to um, sum up really quickly, but it's something that happened to me in fifth grade that I had, I had to overcome and so it was a really interesting story for me to write about and I'm planning on editing that after this course is over. The third was a short story and it was fictional and I don't know where the inspiration came from this because situation applies nowhere near my life. But it's about a girl who has to accept her father's remarriage and the family that comes with it. And so it just is basically about her struggle and how that situation has affected her life. And the fourth is a poem titled Betty Crocker that I revised and so I'm going to talk about that more. Okay, on the left you'll see the original and on the right is the revised version of the poem. And Betty Crocker is basically about a strained relationship. And it's originally um, modeled after the relationship between my sister and I, which after the past few years, it's been kind of distant. And so Betty Crocker is something I wrote when I was sitting home alone um, after baking a cake and she was supposed to come meet with me and she never showed up. And so um, the original poem is five stanzas long and it looks like a recipe in format. In fact, some of my classmates said when they received the poem that they thought it was accidentally a recipe that I sent them, but it's actually a poem. <laughs> um, and after reading the class's comments, uh, I made the revised version, which I'll read for you now. Betty Crocker. One platinum bowl, one stick of Land O'Lakes butter, one bag of Toll House chocolate chips, two brown eggs, one Betty Crocker package of sweet angel food cake mix. I get one glance at the clock, two slow salty tears, three deep breaths. Mix the ingredients, toss the pan in the oven, set oven to 350 degrees, wait 20 minutes, and enjoy. One red and white plaid plate, two fancy forks, one candle at the table covered with a silk cloth from that one time, from that warm, exotic, and happy place. But my life was so easy, and you weren't so busy, and we weren't so different. A full moon and half a plate full later, I blow out the candle, fold the tablecloth, and only wash one fork that night. And so, these are some of the comments I received from you guys, my classmates, uh, as we did our workshop in the class. And the compliments I received is that they liked the format, even though it looked like a recipe at first, it did make sense after reading a poem and the detail and concrete details that are in the poem as well. And the overall meaning, you guys liked how it was kind of sad, but it told a good story once I explained it. And what to change is what was the actual problem in the poem, because in the original I didn't really have a lot of the backstory behind it. And also to add more details, so that was both a compliment and an area to improve upon. And um, one of the specific lines, enjoy, was too dramatic, because I had the dot, dot, dot at the end, which is something I did change. So I'll go back and show you. So the first thing I did was I changed all the letters to be lowercase except for enjoy and make capital because I thought this meant that the author or the narrator, um, as they're making the cake, they're not really realizing the complexity of the situation. And once they find out that the person's not really showing up, enjoy with the single period at the end kind of shows that it's taken a serious note and now they realize that something has happened and uh, the mood has changed. Um, another thing that I kept the same in the poem is the structure and how it's more kind of like a recipe because uh, you still have the ingredients and then the sentence structure is short, which makes it look like a recipe. And I added um, two stanzas. The second stanza of the one glance at the clock, two slow salty tears, three deep breaths kind of shows the person or the narrator and how they're feeling in that situation. And also the fifth stanza, when my life was so easy and you weren't so busy and we weren't so different. I thought that was probably my favorite stanza, stanza that I added because that really gives a lot of emotion to the poem and changes it from like, kind of a silly recipe format and makes it um, more in depth with emotions. Um, and the specific literary elements that I focused on in this poem are concrete details, first of all, which Lisa Rooney, uh, the author of Serious Daring, our textbook for the class, um, defines as physical materials of a poem that help the reader connect with senses. And so the specific exa examples that I had in my poem was sweet angel food cake and also slow salty tears because this kind of gives you the taste and touch aspect in the poem. 
And also another element that I focused on was structure and format, which um, is basically the short lines that represent a recipe. And the third element would be voice, which Roni de defines as the voice that you establish for your persona on the page constitutes one of the primary ways that we will communicate artistically in a memoir. So this is kind of a memoir for me because it's something that happened in my life. And so I thought the voice kind of shows how and sad, you know, kind of lighthearted about the situation that the narrator is, because that's how I felt about the situation. And so that's basically the changes I made with Heidi Crocker. Um, and overall, I'm thankful for the workshop experience because I wouldn't have made the changes I did.